Nah, that ain't sound good. The presence of God is here today. I don't know about you, but I really feel the presence of God, and he deserves all the glory, all the honor. And uh, we, if now, not then, um, we really need God right now. This is what the song says. It says, uh, Lord, we need you now. And we really need him now with everything that's going on. And I don't even know what's going on in your personal life. But if we just look at the world the way the world is, uh, and not just America. I don't know if you pay attention in Africa or you're paying attention in Canada, what's going on over there. Uh, we just need God right now. If now, I don't know, then I don't know when, you know. So uh, if you could just dwell on that, on how much you need God in this moment. Think about, even if you have to think about your own personal situation, what you're dealing with. God is a healer, and he can heal you from that situation. Amen.
up your voices in the moment. The Bible says, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves, get down on their knees and repent from their ways, he would heal the land. Do you need a healing today? Do you need a healing today? Hallelujah. Oh. Everybody say, Tell them we need you now, God. More than ever, we need you. We need you. Come on, let's cry out to the Lord.
Hallelujah. If you sense his presence in this place today, come on, lift your hands high as you can. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. And I am convinced today that whatever you came in this house in need of, God will meet you at the point of your need today. And for some reason I feel the audacity and the boldness to let the devil know that he's going to fail. In every area of your life he's been trying to conjure up something or he's been plotting or planning or scheming I I just have bad news for the devil you're about to fail in the life of God's children because whatever the devil is trying to make for evil in and around your life believe me today God is going to turn it around for your good if if only only if you believe God gonna turn it I dare you to open up your mouth and give God a praise in here today hallelujah hallelujah so father we acknowledge we acknowledge nothing else and no one else but your presence for where your spirit is definitely there is liberty and God you said that if you set someone free they will never know the bondage they came out of ever again so father I thank you for setting someone free in their minds setting someone free in their heart in their spirit, in their home, whatever personal bondage the enemy forces their lives to retreat to, I pray they will never know that area of bondage again. But in the presence of the Lord, there is a fullness. And Father, whoever is lacking, whoever cup is empty or running low, as we have entered into this unbelievable atmosphere of worship I pray that you will begin to fill every cup fill every life glory to God fill every home as they lift their cup up to you today come and quench <laughs> the thirsting of their soul bread of heaven I'm asking you today to feed us Oh, I feel something in here today. I feel something in here today. Feed us until we want no more. We lift our lives up to you. And we ask you to fill it. Those who are watching online, Father, touch them in their homes or in their cars, on their jobs, wherever they're watching this amazing ministry from today. I pray that their hearts will not be disappointed. But whatever you had preordained and pre-ordered for their life, it will be delivered today. Oh God, whatever has been delaying the blessing, I pray that it be delivered today. May someone get a phone call. May somebody get a text. May somebody get an email of good news that they've been waiting and believing and praying for before this day come to a close. I pray that Pastor and Lady Tracy will receive a testimony that a breakthrough took place. And we give you praise now for what's already done in Jesus' name. One more time, you believe you receive. Come on, put your hands together and give God praise. Bless the Lord. You may be seated in this amazing atmosphere. Wow, it is so good to be back um, with my church family, with my brother. Amen. One of the most amazing angels God ever released from heaven to earth to lead. Amen. Great people like you. I'm talking about your pastor. Amen. Can we give God praise for him and for Lady Tracy and for mom and for all the amazing leaders that make this uh, amazing ministry what it is. We thank God for you and I thank God you survived. Amen. That whatever the enemy thought would have taken you out, once again, he has failed and I believe for the rest of this year and your life, he will be a failure over you in Jesus' name. Amen? Amen. I was suffering over there on Aruba on the beaches all day long, just wondering why God will allow me to have to suffer in all of this amazing sand, turquoise, aquamarine water. It's just, it's just amazing how God allows his people to suffer. And so I told Pastor Lydell he should come suffer with me since flights are moving now, so... 
we can go do some jet skiing in Jesus' name, amen. So uh, <laughs> we will take some selfies and send it back. But I'm grateful to be back, and it's so good to see so many people coming back to the house of God where you belong. Amen. It's, it's amazing to see, and um, I'm kind of excited because I think one of my sons is here. And this is amazing to me because this young, I think, I, I think he's here. Everybody's wearing masks. Roberto, are you here? Okay, stand for me, stand for me. Um, and your beautiful wife, I don't want her to sit down, stand. This young man, about, I don't want to be exaggerative, I want to say it was about 15 years ago, him, his mom, and his sister started attending our church in Aruba. And they're from the Dominican Republic originally, and they spoke little English. They spoke fluent Spanish, and him and his sister learned fluent Spanish attending our church. And he came up to New York, he studied, got his degree, amen. And now he lives in Inglewood, New Jersey, right? How far is that, Pastor Inglewood? That's like... Amen. So he decided to drive an hour to come see his pastor this morning and his beautiful wife and his daughter. It's so good to see you guys. God bless you. Thank you for being here. He's a certified accountant, so if you need help, that's the man to see in Jesus' name. All right, your pastor is always so prolific in his presentation. He provokes me because every month he has all of his teachings and topics ironed out. And it just provokes me because I'm just doing things the total opposite. But this morning, I am going to try to harmonize with the teaching that he has been presenting on habits. And I want to begin this morning in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, verses 9 through 10. And Pastor, if I could ask just one small favor, if the sound man can give me a little more monitors, amen, I will buy you a box of Krispy Kreme donuts. Amen. Fit for life is higher. Glory. Um, these donuts have protein on the inside. First Corinthians chapter 2. Yes, Lord. Verses number 9 through 10. It reads, however it is written, no eye has seen and no ear heard and no mind can conceive the things that God has prepared for those who love him. Watch, God has prepared, pre-ordered some things to happen in all of our lives which means whatever God is going to do is already done. So I'm going to say this right now. You are living in a prepared season. <laughs> Meaning whatever you've been believing, praying, and hoping for, God is saying you are so close and you are about to collide with everything. The next verse says, but things, but these things are revealed to us by God's spirit. Now he takes it to another level. He says, whatever I have preordained or prepared for your life, these things I'm going to reveal it to you by my spirit. Why? For the spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. The spirit has the ability to search not just things that are on the surface for your life, but things that are at a deeper level where watch our senses might sometimes prevent us from diving into and so now one of the things that Paul showed me as I begin to look into this verse with another perspective is the fact that God's preparation for your life will never agree with the senses you are operating by. That's why he says eyes haven't seen, ears haven't heard. It hasn't entered into the mechanisms or the things that men govern their life by. He ruled everything out because whatever he is about to show to you, you're not going to need eyes for. You're not going to need ears for. You're not even going to need a prophet for. All you're going to need is the Spirit of God for. Now, the Spirit of God, and, and, and I don't want to really stray from the topic because I really want to impart something this morning. You've got to understand the Spirit of God is not something that takes place in our life or events. You know, the moving or the operation of the Spirit of God is not based upon activities or events. In other words, the depth of Spirit 
that all of us experience here this morning should not be placed on pause until next Sunday. I'm going somewhere, but whatever level of spirit in worship you experience this morning should carry over into your home tonight, should wake up with you tomorrow morning, should be in traffic with you tomorrow and go on the job you don't really want to be on, but the Spirit of God is going to keep you sane in the membrane to get on the job and off the job and get paid until he establishes you in a different area of your life. I want to talk about this morning, I'm about to see it. I'm about to see it. I'm about to see it. Ecclesiastes now chapter 9, verse number 10 says this, Pastor. Whatever your hands finds to do, and if I don't shout this morning, you're not going to fall asleep, right? Because I really want to talk. Whatever your hands find to do, he says now you have to do it in a particular way. He says do it with all of your might. Why? The works of your hands I'm going to show you now, is intended not just to get you paid, but the works of your hands are intended to produce a breakthrough in your life. And whenever people in church talk about breakthrough, they talk about receiving something versus revealing something. A breakthrough is not what comes to you. A breakthrough is where you transition your life to. In other words, now, when God is going to transition or give your life a breakthrough, he takes your life to another position that you will never be in need of the thing that you were in need of before he transitioned you. If you only limit a breakthrough to what comes to you, when that thing is expired, you will be in the same place needing the same thing again. And so I want to make an announcement. Because God is going to transition you by the depth of the spirit he's going to take you to, whatever you've been in need of over the past three months, I decree over your life, you will not be in need of another day in your life. Now, that might sound radical and that might sound a little bit, huh, I don't know, Pastor, but if you're going to allow the Holy Spirit to be active on the inside of your life, watch the activity of the Holy Spirit gives you wisdom on a level not to repeat your life in seasons that you've been praying so hard to get out of. See, the Holy Spirit is not just for you to shout and to feel uh, uh, this unexplainable expression of worship that we experience on Sunday morning, but the experience of the Holy Spirit activates wisdom on the inside of your life that you will not repeat seasons. My God, I, I'm going somewhere now. So watch now. God does not want you to repeat seasons. He wants you to reveal the season that he wants you to create on the outside of your life. I'm going to get to the main I, I'm, I'm topic of this, but I got to lay this right here because now I'm going to tie all of this into the power of habits. Someone say, I've got to create good habits. Come on, say it. I've got to create good habits. All right. The Bible says in one, uh, Psalm 139, verses 7 through 8. Psalm 139, verses uh, 7 through 8. The Bible says, uh, where can I escape from your spirit? This is powerful now because spirits spirits follow you in the invisible world. I'm going to say something past that's going to scare some people this morning. You've got to understand every word you speak is invisible. But the invisibility of your word does not, watch this, negate what it is attracting to your life. And this is why seasons have a tendency to provoke words out of us that attract spirits to us that we do not really invite it to our life. And when we speak because of a season, we attract a level of spiritual warfare to our life that begins to interrupt our habits. When I say I got something to tell you this morning, you better fasten your seatbelts. So now, as a child of God, you can speak something out of your life, watch, that attracts your adversaries and keeps your angels standing still. I'm going to scare you and I'm going to go someplace else to make it make sense. 
David is now asking a question. Where can I go from your spirit? In other words, wherever you are, spirits are present. You just can't see them. Wherever you are, spirits are present. You just can't see them. Now, what begins to manifest the spirits that are present you cannot see is what you're speaking based upon your season. That's why you don't speak based upon a season. You speak based upon your spirit. David said, where can I escape from your presence? Where can I flee? If I go to the heavens, you are there. If I make up my bed in the depths, you are there. Watch. David is now understanding that everywhere I go, a spirit is present. Watch. Everywhere I go, a spirit is present. Everywhere you go, a spirit is present. Now, what baffled me about this uh, thing, um, um, Pastor, is the fact that did, did, did David really meet a spirit when he went certain places? Or did David, watch this, carry a spirit everywhere he go there's a different understanding here now because when you are cultivating your life based upon the habits in your life certain things now are going to begin to follow you everywhere you go everywhere you go things are following you every, every time you open up your mouth something is activated in and around your life so now i begin to ask myself a question in the text did david really meet god's spirit everywhere he go or did david carry god's spirit everywhere he go now the distinction is this if you do not have a habit of worship in your life then you do not know who is going with you everywhere you go that's why he says even though I walk through the valley and the shadows of death I will fear no evil wow you're there how do you know he is there I'm taking him with me because I have a habit to worship and my worship doesn't attract adversaries. My worship only attracts the spirit of God. The reason why the enemy has access to your life in seasons where he shouldn't even find the door is not because he can do what he wants to do in your life. But if you have a habit of speaking negativity, your words attract the type of spirits you are I'm going somewhere and I'm trying to press fast forward. So watch now. David had a knowledge about God. Watch. That gave him access to God everywhere he went. Now this is something that began to baffle me because, you know, sometimes you begin to think that you can only access God in certain environments or access God uh, in certain places or maybe in church I can really get a, a hold of God now because I'm in a place that is supposedly the right atmosphere to get God's attention but David now says if I make up my bed in hell David said you are there now let me tell you something if you ain't had a habit of praying a habit of praising or a habit of worshiping you will never know that God gonna be in the midst of hell with you here's why you do not carry that level of spirit with you because of the level or habit of worship you have on the inside of you so when you go in hell you expect Peck to be bombarded or to be mistreated or taken advantage of by an enemy. But here is David saying something profound. Even when I am in hell, David says, I know you are there. Now, I didn't want to get excited today, but you got to be a bad believer to be standing in the midst of the devil's kitchen talking about I'm going to bless the Lord at all times. How dare you show up in the devil's house I know we can't touch your neighbor, but, but touch yourselves. I wonder what I brought with me. I wonder what I brought with me. Oh, boy. I wonder what I, oh, I wonder who. No, not what. Let's clarify that. I wonder who I brought with me because the spirit is not just a what. It's also a who. I'm going somewhere because I'm going to show you all your habits do is activates a level of spirituality around you. I'm going deeper. So now here's my advice to everyone that is, that's believing for something that you've never seen yet for this year. Take what you know, where you go, and where you go will become what you know. David said, if I make up my bed in hell, you are there. You know what David is saying? I took what I know about God everywhere I went. And everywhere I went became what I know about God. I hope you hear what I'm saying today. 
You don't got to be afraid of the wilderness. Take what you know if you are in the wilderness. You ain't got to be afraid of this, whatever it is they got flying around you in the air, droplets, triplets, wearing masks. Take what you know where you go. And baby, where you go is going to become everything you know. So if you know God is a praiser in here, take God as a praiser out there. Take that knowledge on the job. Take that knowledge in your house. Let the devil know, I'm not just praising God in church. I'm not just worshiping God in church. I'm going to worship God everywhere I go. Because if I can take what I know where I go, I will be able to bless the Lord Here's what's happening in the body of Christ today. We are allowing places and seasons to make us lose sight of what we know. So rather than experiencing what we know where we go, we are experiencing what the season has in store for us. In other words, you can be in something that the enemy thought would have destroyed your life and do not experience his destruction because you're not there experiencing what the season wants you to go through. You are there experiencing what God says, I know about you, what you know about me. Let me go further. Here's what I have to learn now, Pastor. Having access to God has nothing to do with natural entry points. Please watch. Having access to God has nothing to do with natural entry points. Having access to God is predicated by what you know about him. That is why some people will be going through the same thing you're going through and have a different attitude about it because they know more than what you know while you're going through it. Have you really ever seen someone, you know their private business, they're going through hell, but they're still acting like God is like all over their situation. You know they can't afford to pay their bills. Their children acting crazy. Money is funny. And they still have a different expression about God that you don't even have and your situation is better. It's because of what, let me, let me tell you something. David said, I'm thinking about this God. And when I think about this God, my life give an expression that doesn't match my experience. I'm talking to someone who needs to hear me now. When, when you begin to think on the God you serve, your life expresses something that your experience say you should not be expressing. You know the devil is saying you shouldn't be in your right mind by now. But because what you know about God, he will keep you in perfect peace. Because your mind is, is stayed upon him. So here's my first point that I don't want you to miss. Habits, don't miss this please, enables you to get victory over yourself. If you're a student, this is time to take notes now. Watch. Habits enables you to get victory over yourself. Don't miss this. I'm talking to myself. I'm talking to myself. Watch. Habits enables you to get victory over yourself. But here's the harsh reality. I had to learn that getting victory over myself was not a one-time experience. I'm talking to two people in here who can bear witness with me because I'm, I'm really talking to myself. I have gotten victory over myself only to realize getting victory over me was not a one-time experience. Okay, okay. How, 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 how can I break it? You might have repented last week only to realize I need to repent again today. See, you can't celebrate what happened last week. You got to keep doing what you did to get that victory in order to put yourself under subjection to let you know I will not allow you to stop me from being all God has called me to be because now I'm not talking to the devil. I'm talking to me because if I'm going to get victory over me, I've got to tell me getting victory over me is not a one-time experience. That is why, Pastor, people come to church, they get victory, then they don't come back for months because they think, oh, well, I'm saved now. Can I say something, Pastor Tracy? Can I say something that, you know what I realized? When I finally got saved, was when I realized how messed up I am. 
Uh-oh. See, see, y'all don't want to tell the truth. Nah, I know. I'm not talking to nobody in here, but give me a mirror. I'll preach to myself. See, before I was saved, I didn't know how messed up I was. But when I got saved, I began to realize, oh my God, you got stinking thinking. When I finally got saved, I realized, oh my God, you got so much negativity on the inside of you. And I thought the day I said Jesus coming to my heart, all the negativity would have disappeared. But the day I said Jesus coming to my heart, all the negativity started showing up. Like, where were you? Where were you? He said, I was always here. But now you put this Jesus thing on the inside of you, and this Jesus thing is pushing me out of you. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost done, and I'm going to get out of your way. So, Pastor, here's what I learned. Someone say habits. Now, I, I know you're wearing masks, but here's what I learned, Pastor. Habits, habits are one word. You ready for this? Habits are suggestions. Now, please, I pray you don't miss this. <laughs> habits are suggestions. In other words, here's what habits are designed to do. Habits will introduce ideas to you and over you until your identity begin to marry and to mirror what the habits introduced. I'm going to say it again. Habits are suggestions. In other words, see when you read the word of God and your spirit is to talk to you, your spirit is suggesting something to you. See, so when the word of God, see, because the problem is too many people are quoting what they don't believe they're qualified for. See, 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 if you're gonna keep, if you're gonna quote the word and don't believe you're qualified to experience what you're quoting, then baby, stop quoting. It don't make sense. You know, you, you, well, I, 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 the word of God says this, but I don't know if my life can really become what the word of God just says. So a lot of people are quoting what they don't even believe they're qualified for. Baby, if the word says you're blessed, believe you're qualified to be blessed. If the word of God says you can go to the top, believe you are qualified. I'm like, do I got anybody in TLC who can Tell the devil if the word of God says it, that means I'm qualified to experience this thing, baby. So the word of God is suggestions. Become a millionaire. It's a su su suggestion. And the word of God leads you and watch you ponder it. A millionaire? I'm just trying to pay my monthly bills, man. A millionaire? The word of God says, become your own business owner. Business owner, I'm so content with this job. It's nice. I've been here so many years. Never disappointed me. I might get a promotion again next year, man. I'm about to retire, you know, 25 years. I'm going to get a nice watch and a dinner. And now watch this. The word of God only suggests. The word of God only suggests and leaves you and watch you now go into warfare between what the word of God says for you and what you believe for you. So sometimes the biggest warfare to the word God gives you is not the devil. It's your own own belief system because all the word is going to do is drop it in your spirit now some of you wearing masks I can't see your face but oh I know how your face looked right now how many things watch this church the word has suggested to you but because you have no habits your habits leave all the earth on you that you cannot see the treasure in you Pastor, put my coat when I'm done. So watch. The words or your habits are suggestions. <laughs> I suggest to you that you are more powerful than who you think you are. I feel like I had to park there for a second. I suggest to you that you are more blessed than who you think you are. Here's why. Suggestion says this. It introduces ideas. Watch. To you and over you until your identity begin to marry and to mirror what it is, watch this, your habits have introduced. So when your habits introduce someone to you, who you are is looking at who your habits are introducing, and here's what you're saying. You're telling your habits, that's not me. That, that's not me. How many times you have denounced yourself <laughs> because what habits want to show you, you at the moment can come into agreement with what is being revealed 
so you keep it buried. Watch. Habits now wants to create laws because now when something becomes legal in your life, watch, you can't break it. If you break it, it's a penalty. Watch, Pastor. Habits now want to become legal in your life. Habits become laws. One of those laws that habits want to create is called the law of conviction. Now, I know we know conviction as it relates to the Holy Spirit in church. I just messed up last night. Holy Spirit, you convicted me. Oh, my God. I promise if you would just forgive me, I'll never do this again. I'm going to delete his number from my phone. <laughs> let me just call him one more time and tell him, though. Let me call him one more time and tell him that it's over. And you know if you call that joker one more time and tell him it's over, he going to whisper that thing in your ear. Baby, but give me a chance to prove my love for you, baby, baby. Baby, if you just allow me to explain this situation, I promise we can get over this. And you and your crazy said, yeah, but I know, but oh my God, I'm just trying to... <laughs> That ain't conviction. That's emotions. <laughs> Church folk get conviction mixed up. So what is conviction? See, habits create laws. One of those laws are conviction. Here's what conviction says. You have to confront your comfort and convenience with a conviction to cultivate your life. You have to confront your comfort and your conviction, rather, and your convenience with a conviction to cultivate your life. Thank you, my sister. You know why? Some of you are buried. You're buried. Oh, boy. And habits is how you begin to, is what I call, unearth yourself. <laughs> habits is how you begin to unearth yourself. Adam was comfortable being naked until he sinned. <laughs> when Adam sinned, he covered himself. Watch. All the while, he was cool, being transparent, open, his real self before God. When he sinned, he all of a sudden became a fashion designer. He grabbed some Gucci and Louis leaves and stitched them up. And before you know it, forget Ralph Lauren and all these kind of guys. Adam was the first designer. Why? But why he covered himself? He covered himself now, watch this, because the habit of worship was broken. But he heard the voice calling him to come back. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm saying? But he realized now, wait, I, I broke the habit and now I'm wearing some stuff that makes me covers what I used to use to enter into it. So rather than running to it, I'm now running away from it. I'm afraid, Pastor, that this pandemic season, a lot of believers have developed habits that have pushed them away from God. That's why even the doors of the church, listen, people can make, let me tell you something, man. I just came on a flight from Aruba. There was no social distancing. American Airlines was packed like a sardine can. I don't care if you wore five gloves. Somebody going to breathe on you. It's quiet in this church now. American Airlines didn't sell one seat here. This seat not for sale. This seat not for sale. Then the next seat for sale. People were sitting down next to each other trying to get from where they started off to where they wanted to be. They did not care about the possibility of catching whatever this is. But now people who didn't practice the habit of worship in their life, now that God is saying, I need you to get back to my house, all the things that design a mind have sold on them is now keeping them away. And now the valid reason is, oh, but there's still a pandemic in our land. There's still one in Walmart. There's still one in... <clears throat> um, leave that alone. Another law habits creates is called consistency. Someone say consistency. Oh, I love this one because this, this, this one is for me. When you break the law of consistency, don't miss this. When you break the law of consistency, you pay the fine of complacency with your life. I, I, I don't want to sound like I'm being arrogant, but I can't stand people who have an anointing to start but not to finish. 
You know, I can't stand people. You know, at the beginning, they're excited to start something. And then, you know, when the road get rocky or the waves get vehemently rough, they don't have that same anointing. I can't be around people who can start but can't finish nothing. Let me tell you something. The reason why you got to create habits is because God did not anoint you to start then stop. God anointed you to start and finish. And I declare over your life, whatever God started in you, he says, I am faithful and I am just to bring it to pass in your life. But wait, wait, he can't bring it to pass in your life if you have no habits. Am I teaching right? Or am, I, am I okay, lady? Am this okay? For real? I mean, I don't want to cost no, my first time back. And I don't know. Well, he need to get out of here. He need to get back on the flight with his mask. And don't come back to our church talking about complacency and consistency and laws and that kind of stuff. Because what happens is now, when you break the law of consistency and conviction, the same mountain you went up on to get the law, you got to go all the way back up there to get it again. And you know why some of your life is so repetitive? Because you keep breaking stuff you're supposed to be keeping. You don't understand what I'm saying. You keep breaking stuff you should be keeping you keep on breaking stuff you start a diet then break it then you got to start all over again you gotta start <laughs> i'm trying to come back in case somebody get trigger happy and try to shoot at me they might miss you start i can't be around people who start but don't finish because you're starting over consumes unnecessary energy and when you think you finally get back to a place you were before you celebrating but you're celebrating returning to where you were versus using the energy to get someplace you've never been you you're all the one pastor grand the talking here today i listen 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 a lot of people think Returning someplace they've been before is victory. That's why I said you got to learn how to get victory over yourself. But getting victory over yourself is not a one-time experience. So when you see some kind of progress, you put your car in park, then you start celebrating. Not knowing the more you're celebrating, you're actually going back in reverse. So all the energy you use to get here, you say, oh my God, I can fit in the dress. I can fit in the dress. I can fit in the dress. Then you go out stuffing yourself. And the more you stuff yourself, you're going back. Then you go in back then you're going back and here's how the mind works you know how much energy you're gonna need to get back there then you slack off from your habits then you disappear from fit for life you stop posting on facebook i've been watching some of y'all some of y'all even post for a long time yeah yeah y'all think i'm gonna be watching i'm watching in aruba some <laughs> am i teaching right or am, am, am i am i right some of you ain't post for a long time some of you ain't walked by the beach in a long time. You know why? Fit for life is over. No, the schedule is over. The habit should continue. I'm tired. I'm sorry, Pastor. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. How much time I got, sir? Okay, thank you. So here's what habit says. Let me be nice. Here's what habit says. I told Pastor. Beginning here, where's the book? I'm going to brag on myself. I'm not good on this. I told Pastor, I'm going to write four books this year. I told him. We encourage each other. We had a mandate. But our body, and I'm going, you know, I don't really brag about myself. I, I suck at that. I don't like, I don't know. I just, I can't promote myself. I just can't. I said, Pastor, I'm going to lose the weight I'm going to lose. And I'm going to write three books. I'm down 20 pounds. <laughs> For real. And I'm proud, oh, I'm proud about it. As a matter of fact, my son saw the picture I post. He's like, man, you look good for 50. I'm like, you know what? When I see you, I'm going to rip you. <laughs> I said, I ain't 50 yet, but all right. But, but we were determined. We made a pack. We're going to do this this year. No gym. Just outside. Doing simple things. Watch this, though. I had to practice getting victory over my mind first before my body follows. Oh, glory to God. Let me tell you something. I had to make my mind believe that celery, kale, which I had this morning. I gave him a shot. Celery, kale, and cucumber. I had to make my mind believe that was a banana split with extra toppings. I had to make my mind believe that because once I got my mind to follow, my body is going to line up. And let me tell you something. Oh, I love the way my body is lining up. I can't wait to go back to the beach. There was a time I couldn't take off my shirt at the beach. Too many Krispy Kreme was on the side. But no, take a look at me now. 
now. See y'all hating on me. See y'all supposed to be celebrating. See that that's how jealousy look. That 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 right there is what killed the church. Jealousy, pastors. Jealousy. They don't know. So, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. We're supposed to be serious, right? We're in the house of God. So I said, Pastor, no, no, no. I'm, I'm not playing this year. This, see, and, and, and you got to talk to yourself. Listen, talk to yourself to see your own response. See, you sometimes don't like the response people give you. When the response you should reject is the one you give yourself. When it don't lines up with what you want to hear. I began to talk to myself. I was, we were talking all the way from March to now. I finished one new book. The other one is being um, printed, I mean, designed to be printed. And by November, the other one is going to be printed as well. But I had to create a habit of making sure the only place I see my goals will not be with my dreams. See, the problem is most of, most of our lives as believers, we see it best when we fall asleep. You wake up excited, only have to go back to sleep. I feel like I'm being rude. And see, 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 because progress of a different language. When you start talking with your progressive tongue, people who are slacking in their life don't think you're being arrogant. But they don't know the price you paid to learn a new language. I'm going to say it again. See, see, progress of a different language. And when you get around progressive people, you're going to think something wrong with them. But let me tell you something. People have to pay a price to learn that language. So there's another book I have coming out. You'll be the first person to get it. I just got it from my printer. It's a hundred and, um, I don't know that much. 170 something, all original thoughts that marry scripture. But in the book, I challenge you to create your own thought in order to learn your own language. They're going to be on sale afterwards. Pastor's going to help me because I suck at this. And I got just three more slides and I'm going to get out of your way. Here's what I learned. Habit says the new you that you want to experience, and this one of the quotes of the book. Habit says, the new you that you want to experience begins in the you that you are tired of experiencing. <laughs> that's in the book. That's, that's a free one, so now you know what's in there. Listen, listen. Habit says, oh, you want the new you? But guess what? The new you begins in the you you are tired of experiencing. So watch this now. Watch this. Was he Saul first or was he Paul first? <laughs> See, who really came first, Saul or Paul? To the point now, he was to wrestle. When I would do good, <laughs> evil is present. The things that I would, I don't. The things that I should, I don't do. He says, he says, I'm wrestling. This is no demonic thing. Paul is now talking to either the Saul in him or the Paul in him. Here's your problem. You have not learned that you are Paul should be talking to your Saul. You've allowed your life to be Saul telling Paul this mightn't happen. Now, if you don't read the Bible, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. How long are you going to be Saul Binding up who you should be, Paul. Here's the quote to marry it. Listen, habit says the new you you want to experience begins in the you you are tired of experiencing. In other words, the new you is already in you, but you've got to get tired of being the old you in order to become the new you. Some of you ain't tired, you know. You ain't tired. You're going to go home today and just chill again. You ain't gonna make, I'm going a, I'm to a, I'm a try change next week. Here it is, Pastor, I'm done. Habit says, <laughs> there's a hard one. If you are not, see, and, and, and guess what? You can pray till thy kingdom come. His will will not be done. Watch me, please, because guess what? You can pray one way and believe a total different. And your unbelief can cancel your prayer. Because you cannot be believing but unproductive. Unproductivity will put you in a season that's not on your prayer list. Now I'm just being PG. Now I'm just talking. When you are unproductive, it places you in a season you're not praying for. Uh-oh. So now watch this and I'm done. For real. Watch. Habit says, if you are not constantly working on yourself, you already have your final product. <laughs> oh, 
Well, I want to look over. Because guess what? This has nothing to do with no demonic forces. Habit says, if you are not constantly working on yourself, you already have the final product. Do you want to live the rest of your life being who you are right now? This is why repenting is so powerful. But once again, repenting is only practiced when we sin. You know, one of them sin that church folk, if they find out, they're going to put you on blast and they're going to put you on social media. Then they will come sit next to you in church or if you're a pastor, they can't hear you preach no more. Oh, my God, the pastor sin. The pastor, I can't believe the pastor did that these pastors are going crazy we need oh god we just need some new pastors why well, don't say we need a new president because i mean um i didn't just say that right sorry I, what i meant to say was the fact um um see see <laughs> see i want to change your mind before i leave you if you only repent when you sin you don't understand repentance because repentance doesn't mean to be apologetic for an action. <laughs> Sin, please watch, is not when you did whatever the act is. As a matter of fact, sin in the Greek means coming up short. <laughs> it's harmatia. Read it for yourself. See, the enemy wants you living life coming up short. He wants you to live in the, I almost had it. You don't see what I'm saying. I almost got my degree. I, I almost started my business. I almost did the thing I believe I'm assigned. See, that's what sin is. So, see, when you repent, it's not about being apologetic for an action. Repentance says getting rid of your personal darkness so that you will not contribute to your night seasons. I'm close to my computer now because you can't take no more. See, when you repent is a change of man mindset. When you change your mindset, you are getting rid of your personal darkness. Let me say it boldly, all of us have personal darkness. Oh, y'all going to act cute on me now. Let me, let me say it again. All of us have personal darkness. But what makes our night season worse is when we don't repent, change our minds, we take our personal darkness into our night season and our night season becomes darker than it really is. Not because the night is dark, but our personal darkness because we're not repenting is adding to something that shouldn't even be this intense. So pastor, people who are struggling is because they have no habits. Because when you have habits, watch this. You don't wake up to do something, you wake up to become something. If any man be in Christos, man, I wish I had time. If any man be in Christ, he already is a new creature. The problem is you cannot see the new when you look at you. So now I have to battle with the fact that Jesus says, I'm a new creature. Are there any new creatures in there this morning? Any new creatures? But pastor, now I have to battle to when I look at me, I don't see nothing new. Because the new that you're looking for doesn't begin in the natural. See, the reason why I started off in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2 verse 9 and 10 is because, watch this, he says, eyes have been seen. See, so when you can't see it, the devil says, oh, just stop doing what you're doing. You're not getting nowhere. You're not making progress. See, people have quit church because they thought, if I came to church for this amount of time, I should get this amount of blessing. If I don't get this amount of blessing in this amount of time, I'm going to quit the habit of coming to church. So now, watch this, he says, eyes have been seen. But not because you can't see it means you are not it. Ears have been heard. Not because people can't tell it to you means you can't confirm in your spirit you are it. Neither has it entered into the hearts of other individuals the things that God has in store. But watch this. They are revealed to you by his spirit, even the deeper things of God. So here's what habits does. 
Habits take you to a level you could not go by yourself. Let's stand this morning. When I began to learn this over the past couple of months, I even started to realize that the things I thought I needed to change, I didn't need. I told Pastor, I haven't been to the gym in six months. Six months, no gym. I went back in my yard, and I started being creative with my mind. I worked over six months in the back of my yard, and I began to see a me manifesting with hardly anything I thought I needed. And the only price I had to pay was with my mindset. Don't be conformed. We read that scripture so lightly to understand the power of it. See, all the information coming to your senses, watch this, is keeping your mind at a certain level that even though you know something, don't miss this, what you now know isn't working for you. Because, because there's a level of knowing that doesn't work no more. Oh my God. There is a level of knowledge that's not going to work no more. You're going to have to get more because of where you're trying to go. And if, if you are not intensifying your habits in the spirit, you're going to experience roadblocks. You're going to experience closed heavens. You're going to experience, you know, setbacks. And you're going to end up in pits and be asking God, why am I here? And it's not why are you there. Is do you know who you are while you are there? Because when you know who you are while you are there, where you are can keep you. But when believers don't understand who they are, they prolong a season and be in something longer than they were designed to be. I pray today that every season trying to attach itself to your life will be broken by the habits you are now developing in this season of your life. That you will not be good at starting, but poor at finishing. Some of you got some projects you need to go home and apologize to. You got some dreams you need to go home and apologize to. You started it with great expectation. You started with great energy and great excitement. But now you put it on pause. And it's been on pause for a long while. And now you need to tell that dream, that vision, I am so sorry for neglecting you because of my own inability to develop habits that I can produce the law of conviction and consistency to cultivate my life. Watch. And to not break the law of consistency, thereby I have to pay the fine of complacency. How many people are tired of being complacent? I'm tired of the same mountain, tired of the same valley, tired of the same battle. And most of all, I'm tired of getting the same results. If you will develop habits in your life, baby, you will be a breakthrough person. Is there anybody in triumphant life that's bold enough? Don't tell the devil. Tell you, I will be a breakthrough person. Come on, touch your own life. Don't touch no neighbor. Say it over yourself. I will be a breakthrough person. Come on, lift your hands to heaven. I pray over you. That the spirit not to repeat, but the spirit to reveal glory to God come upon your life right now. You've been repeating things long enough. May the spirit now to reveal come upon your life. That the things your eyes never saw before you're about to see. The things your ears never heard before you're getting ready to hear. The confirmation that has never been inside of your heart is about to show up. Because why? God has already prepared some things for you. You are living in a prepared season. And I declare over you, whatever God has prepared for you is about to be revealed to you in the name of Jesus. It's about to find your address. It's about to come to your bank account. It's about to come to your body. Whatever you've been believing for, whatever God has prepared for you, it's already yours in Jesus' name. If you believe you receive, come on, put your hands together and give. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, 
mind every head bowed and eye closed. Father, we declare even now that you are sovereign and you are mighty and you are awesome and you cannot fail. And because of your character and because of your nature, Lord God, and we are your children, we declare we cannot fail. So, Father, I pray now that we would begin to reevaluate, reshift, refocus our habits in this season. You already finished us. It's already finished. And then you begin us. And so, Father, cause for our mindsets to line up with your finished product. Cause for us to think according to your word and your plan. Holy Spirit, your assignment is so clear. It is you who gives us the mind of Christ. It is you who gives us clarity and direction. Holy Spirit, speak to every heart and every believer that we would make this word not a one-time occurrence, but God, an everyday thought life, that something is changing, something is shifting. Our habits are renewing according to your plan. Father, there's someone today watching, someone listening in, someone maybe even here, that they have been off track for so long they can't find the track. So Father, we pray right now that we be bold enough to declare, I want to get back on the right track, God. I pray for every person today that was lost, and now they declare, I want to be found by God. I want to get back on the right track with God. And so, Father, I pray for the lost, the wounded, the wayward, those that are without Savior today, that they would make a declaration that today I want Jesus in my life. Today I want to change. I want to transform. I, I need to establish something new. And if that's you today, simply confess with your mouth and declare, today I'm starting over. Today I am giving him renewed focus. Today I'm trusting in Jesus. Today I want to give him my whole heart. That's your confession. Your confession today is, I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins and that he got back up with all power in his hand. That's the confession of salvation today. And I want to make him Lord of my life. Father, I pray for the lost, but I also pray for the believer on today. Every believer that that word hit them and they said, I got to make some adjustments. Would you lift your hand on today? If you're home, lift your hand just if you're home. I want to pray for every believer whose hand is lifted and you're declaring even now I'm about to change some stuff starting today. And so Father, I pray that their commitment and their conviction and their consistency would marry one another in this moment. And so every hand lifted today, whether at home or here today, God, I pray that the Holy Spirit would navigate us through the moments where we feel inconsistent and remind us to stay on course. I pray but now that we would speak to ourselves and continually marry ourselves to your will. Father, I thank you for every hand lifted today decide to continue to walk after your will and your way on today. And Father, we will decide to continue to give the enemy a black eye every single time he tries to come up and remind us that we are, we're to stop short. We are going to finish the race. So we thank you even now, Father, and we give your name the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now take those hands and put them together.
Now I dare you to open up your mouth and just magnify the Lord. There's something about our worship. Come on, open up your mouth and just bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. The Lord is good. His mercy endure forever. Was that good? Oh my gosh. Now, many of you need to go back over and watch it again. Sometimes you need to go back and think through it. I know he said some stuff. I tried to write it down quickly. I'm going to have to go back. Uh, they did not pop up on the screen. It, it, it just it was just thought life. It was there. There it was. So we need to go back over and kind of think through what you need to reassign to your life. Just say, God, oh, I, I stopped doing this, but you never told me to stop. I just stopped. Hmm. I got to get consistent again. And you said something about conviction. It's interesting, when I feel a level of conviction, it should make me stop the wrong I was doing and go back to what I should have been doing before that stopped me. I'm praying that your convictions become real and that something will shift in your life. And I thank you for joining us on today. Listen, uh, just my thoughts. Do me a favor if you're online and you're like, oh, wait, I want to get it, I want to get it. You'll have to inbox us. You have to say, hey, I want a copy of the book. The book is simply, it's $10. Wow. Somebody say, wow. 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 Yeah, $10. And you can get it. You don't, you don't need cash. You just We're in a cashless world now. Uh, the books are going to be as you exit, and you're going to uh, just simply put a progressive thinker, right? Progressive thinker. Progressive thinker. Money sign, cash app. Money sign. Can y'all throw that up for me online? Money sign progressive thinker and all you got to do is uh, let us know that you're ordering the book and, give, and you inbox us and we'll send it to you we'll get it to you get in your hands if you're here today you will be uh, I, don't, I don't know how many copies you have because how many 30 it's only 30 copies all right so uh, um, he is a phenomenal uh, he's been such a, a great blessing to my life and helping me think through uh, I change over I, I I changed over so many thoughts, even in my own book, uh, because he challenged the push. This is going to really bless your life. And so as you go, <clears throat> you know, you could do, do it now if you're in the room. It's only 30 copies. I don't know if online you'll get it. We'll have to bring them back again and, and, uh, and get it to you. But uh, only 30 copies for $10. So you just go ahead and cash out Progressive Thinking. When you go back there, show them that you did it, and because he's not going to be back there. But if you just show him, hey, I, I paid for the book, boom, 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 and you'll get a copy. Amen? All right, come on. Hey, if, we're, if you've been joining us online, TBI is coming up. And um, we have books for sale for that. This week starts TBI. I think my class, The Bait of Satan, um, My First Steps, uh, Come Follow Me 3 is only going to be offered. Prayer classes every day at 6 o'clock. Listen, men, every man that has been a part of our class, I need you to register. And, oh, I've been coming, I've been coming. Yeah, great. I need to be able to know who's in my class, who's in the class. Actually, not my class. Minister Q is going to be teaching that class. I'll just be a participant in that class as well on Tuesdays. And so I encourage you, please register for every class. We need every member, partner. Uh, whether you, you don't have to be a member to join our, our classes. You can be a guest. You can be like, I just want to learn. I want to grow. This is a no-nonsense experience. We're going to help you grow through teaching and education elements, and uh, it's a phenomenal time. So please do that. Um, am I forgetting anything else? TBI, help me. No? Nope. All right, registration. I just put registration up. I was working. I forgot I didn't put it up. Registration's up already for Sunday. Uh, first 100 people, there he is. We, we, we're hitting our marker, so you please, if you register, you gotta come, or, or at least let us know that you're not coming. And please, if you could not tell us the night before, because we're ultimately when we hit 100, we have to tell some people that they can't make it because we don't want to um, you know, overpack. We want to be able to do the uh, social distancing and so forth. Amen? How many people get back to fitness? I know if you're already doing it, amen. But let's get back on it. Let's do it. Eating right? No, you, you might have stopped. I'm just saying, we're going to get right. All right? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm at my 210 marker. I got... 10 more pounds to go, 10 more pounds, and I'm excited, and um, 
I, I know he doesn't want me to call him out, so I won't call him by name, but he, he's my hero. He lost 30 pounds over our Fit for Life. Um, if you're on our Fit for Life group, you know who I'm talking about, but I know he's not a, a public person, so I won't shout his name out, but lost over 30 pounds while, while in this, still walking over 20-something thousand steps, crushing it, and I say thank you so much for participating with us. Um, if you're not on the Fit for Life group, you need to get in that TLC Fit for Life group, all right? Hey, God bless you. We're going to give as well. If you haven't, uh, you haven't sowed the seed on what was shared with you today. You know, nobody goes into the store and walks out with stuff and like, oh, I got that. That was good. I'm going to leave. I ain't, thank you very much. No, we sow seed. We sow seed. So please, uh, those who are tithers, thank you already. But if you have not, we encourage you. We're going to show you ways to give on today as well as we have news. Hey, Chop Life is a place of people like you where we love God, love people, and serve the world. God bless you. Have a blessed day.